Michael Phelps, the most decorated athlete in Olympic history. Of his 28 Olympic medals, 23 are gold. To put that in perspective, the person who has won the second most gold medals has nine. You can see that Michael Phelps is an extraordinary athlete. So, what does it take to be that great? Michael himself said that his success was due to hard work, but he also repeatedly credited the team of people that guided his swimming and strength training, his recovery, and even his sleep throughout his career. He said, I knew I had to get the right sleep, the right nutrition. I knew I had to get the right massage. Sometimes Michael had to do things he described as prison. He really disliked the high altitude training camps, but he did it anyway. He knew that he accomplished twice the work when he trained at high altitude. Phelps said, I don't want to say it's easy, but if you sacrifice, if you're willing to work hard, if you can figure out small little things that make you work, and you have the right people around you, it's really easy. So, why are we talking about Michael Phelps? Because you are Michael Phelps and I am your coach. You are trying to learn a new skill and I'm going to help you learn the small little things that make you work. Sometimes I am going to ask you to sit a certain way or hold your hands a certain way that will feel uncomfortable and weird and you will just want to do what feels comfortable, what you're used to. Remember, Michael Phelps thought his high altitude training was prison, but he did it anyway, knowing that it would help him reach his goal. So what is our goal? Not to be a gold medal Olympic swimmer, but to be a great keyboarder with amazing technique and speed. What are the small things that make you work in keyboarding? We call these small things technique. The first technique is to sit up straight. Simple, right? But it makes a big difference. You can choose to sit with your back against the chair, or you can sit on the edge of your chair like this. Sometimes kids like to sit on the edge because it's easier for their feet to touch the ground. Choose whichever makes you feel balanced and steady. What I don't want to see is someone hunched over like this or leaning back in their chair like this. These positions will slow you down and you will make more keyboarding mistakes. The second technique is keep your feet balanced. Balanced feet look like this. Balanced feet keep you steady. Some of your feet can't touch the ground on these chairs though, so here are some options that I will allow. You can grab a stool or something else to put your feet on, or wrap your feet around the front legs of your chair. I will even allow you to cross your feet at your ankles. What I don't want to see is anything that causes your body to be crooked or unbalanced, like this, or this, or even this. The next technique is to slide your keyboard to the edge of the table. When I walk into a computer lab, I can tell if a class has learned to keyboard correctly just by seeing where the keyboards are placed. Placing the keyboard in this position works with all the other techniques to improve speed and accuracy. The next technique is what I call having hang loose space between your tummy and the table. If you've ever been to Hawaii or a beach where there is surfing, you might notice people saying, hang loose, and doing this sign. Everybody try it. Now, while you are making that sign, stick your thumb in your belly button and your pinky against the table like this. Stretch those fingers. This is how close you should be to the table. That's why we call it hang loose space. 
The next technique is keep your elbows at your side. Your elbows make a nice, relaxed right angle when you key. Notice though that her elbows aren't glued to her side. They are relaxed and free to move. If you are sitting too close to the table, watch what happens. We call these chicken wings. If your elbows are making chicken wings, you are too close to the table. You can also be too far from the table. Watch what happens to her arms when she sits that way. She becomes a zombie. When we use hang loose space, it helps keep our arms in the right position. Now, if you have extra long arms or short arms, you will adjust to what works for you. The next technique is to be like a bear claw. Fingers curved, wrists flat. Everybody be like a bear. <laughs> now, drop your hands like you're typing. This is what your hands should look like. If you play the piano, you will be used to holding your hands this way. When I was young, my mother was teaching me to play the piano. Sometimes she would say, don't spill the milk. I thought that was weird at first since I didn't see any milk around. But she said, imagine you have a glass of milk on your hands. If you lift your wrist like this, the milk will spill. Likewise, if you drop your wrist like this, you will also spill the milk. In keyboarding, we call these mountains and valleys. These are mountains and valleys that we don't ever want to see. The number one keyboarding mistake I notice is kids dropping their wrists or resting them on the keyboard. This will limit your speed and accuracy. I don't suggest practicing with a glass of milk on your hand, but if you want, Try placing a penny or an M&M on your hand to see if you can type without it falling off. The next technique is fingers curved on home row and thumbs on the space bar. When you are keying, each finger has a specific home. That finger always rests on that specific key until it has a job to do. If a finger leaves its home to go to a party or get some milk, it comes home immediately after. The thumbs always rest on the space bar. This is where the thumbs live. They never leave, and they never rest on the bottom of the keyboard. I will teach you more about home row and how to find it without looking down later. The last technique is keep your eyes on your copy. What do you think your copy is? Your copy is where you find the information you are typing. In this class, your copy will usually be located on the stand next to your computer. Sometimes, though, it will be your screen. Sometimes, you may be looking at a poster on the wall. But there is one place that you will never, ever, ever, ever look. And where is that? Your fingers. Never look down at your fingers. Sounds a little scary, huh? How am I supposed to type without looking at my fingers? Don't worry. If you use the keyboarding technique we've just learned and work hard in class, you will be able to do it. Every year, students aren't sure it's possible, but every year they do it, and you will too. Let's go over keyboarding technique one last time. Sit up straight, feet balanced, Keyboard pulled all the way forward. Hang loose space between your tummy and the table. Elbows at your side. Wrists flat. Fingers curved on home row. Thumbs on the space bar. Eyes on the copy. These are the small little things that give you the foundation to become a great keyboarder.